All right, now just checking. Yes, okay. We are live, we are live. Hey, Jackie, where are you hiding? <laughs> just a minute, let me on the camera. Hi, hi, hi. I'm good, thank you. <laughs> hi, everyone. Hello, hello. Let's just wait a few minutes for more people to join. In the meantime, how have you been, Jackie? What time is yeah, it? Is it 8 for you? Yeah, yeah, it's 8 p.m. IST. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, the weather is nice today, so I hope it stays like that. Because yesterday, uh, for people that don't know, I'm in Canada. <laughs> yesterday was sunny at the beginning of the day, and then it started snowing out of nowhere. So that was a real bummer. Um, hello, Niket. Oh, again, I love your profile picture. That circle looks so good. All right, Jackie, why don't you tell the community a little bit about yourself so people that don't know you can get to know you and follow you on socials and all of that. Sure, definitely. So so my name is Jitendra Bhavna and a lot of people call me Jackie, right? So currently I'm working as a senior solution architect for the EPM systems. And so basically I am working on the MuleSoft uh, from last six, seven years. I am doing a lot of contribution to MuleSoft. I am one of the MuleSoft ambassador, like, you know, so like uh, I love to uh, work on the uh, MuleSoft project basically. And I have almost done more than 20, 25 projects on the MuleSoft, which includes like platform setup, like digitalization, like API design, API development, API architecture. So I have a, like, uh, good overall uh, great experience on the mule shop and i i love i love to play you know cricket and i love to cook you know cook the cook various dishes basically so that is my hobby generally like you know i watch cricket a lot i play cricket a lot and sometimes you know i cook the food at home also at least twice or thrice in the week basically yeah nice i i don't cook that much <laughs> definitely <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. All right. Thank you so much, Jackie. So I guess uh, I think we're getting more people. Hey, Munaf. Um, so maybe we can get started with uh, what you have for today. Do you have a screen? You're not sharing yet. Just letting you know. uh, let, let me present it. Yeah. Just let me know once you can see my screen. I have just presented. I will just see the entire screen, see. All right. Yeah, got it. OK. Perfect. OK, so let's start. Okay. Should I start with the session? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, just okay. a question. Do you like music on the background or do you prefer not to? Yeah, that's fine. Like, uh, I don't have any issue. Like, you can play the music in the background. That's fine. All right. Perfect. You can start, though. I'm just going to put okay. something. So, yeah. So, guys, welcome to this Twitch session. So, today, like, we will going to discuss on any point MQ. So, we will going to see a various component uh, related to any point MQ. We will see like how we can implement it, uh, durability or reliability or guaranteed delivery pattern, how we can implement uh, basically a circuit breaker pattern with uh, any point MQ. Then we will going to see uh, like how we can use the REST API to publish the message and subscribe the message from the any point MQ. And uh, so there are many things we are going to see in today's uh, session. Okay. So first, uh, let me explain what is AnyPoint MQ, right? So I think most of the people are aware, right? It's a service uh, provided by the MuleSoft. It is a completely integrated with AnyPoint platform. It is a messaging service, basically. It's nothing, it's a messaging service. So generally it follow a publish subscribe model. So generally you can publish your message to the queue. You can read the message from the queue. So basically publish subscribe model. It's a multi-tenant service. So I think most of the people are aware what is the multi-tenant multi -tenant service. So it's a multi-tenant service. It's a completely cloud messaging service. It's a managed service. So you don't have to worry about 
uh, background infrastructure. You don't have to worry about the disaster recovery. You don't have to worry about scalability. So there are many other things you don't have to worry about. Like, you know, you simply have to create the queue. You simply have to create the exchange or you, you simply have to create the first in, first out, you know, a queues. Like everything will be taken care of by the mule shop at the back end. Like you just have to, like you don't have to worry about the disaster recovery because whenever you create, uh, whenever you create any queue or any point MQ itself is like, you know, spread across the three availability zones. One of the availability zone goes down. You have a second availability zones from where like, you know, your service can resume. Like you have a third availability zone. In case if all the three availability zone goes down, then the service will goes down. Generally, it doesn't happen. It like sometimes it, it happens, but generally I don't see it happens. It's 99.999 percent is available, right? So that is all about any point MQ. Let me uh, start with some kind of uh, demonstration quickly. Uh, okay, so I will start with Q first. Uh, then I will I will I will go into explore various other components. So I will start with a simple thing. So here, uh, this is my AnyPoint Studio. So before I move into AnyPoint Studio, I can log in into my AnyPoint platform. So this is my AnyPoint platform. So under AnyPoint platform, if you go under the management center, you have some services called MQ basically. So right, so MQ means messaging queue. So here you can see a various thing, destination. So like you can see a various region where you have to create a queue, exchange or whatever. So you can see multiple location. I think it's 12 locations supported. Okay. Then here, uh, I will be going to see how to create client apps and all, all those things. The first thing I will going to create a simple queue. So I will click on this plus and I will just select queue. We have exchange, we have a FIPO. We are going to see the use cases where we can use exchange, where, where we can use the FIPO. But I will start with queue first. So you have to just provide the queue name. I will just say test queue. Right. So message time to leave. So let's consider if message has been not picked by any consumer, the message will stay in the queue for the seven days message detail, but you can change it to one day, two days, whatever, like, you know, so, but I will keep default. So the de default acknowledgement timeout, if like somebody has consumed the message and if that particular service is not able to respond within the two minutes, right? So it will get timeout, right? So default delivery delay. So once message is published to queue, Right. So what should be the delivery delay? Like uh, in, like uh, you can put the delay. Basically, if you put 10 seconds, the message will be not picked by any consumer for next 10 seconds. As soon as 10 seconds is completed, the message will be picked. But for now, I kept one second only. Then we have encryption. So if you want to uh, encrypt the message when you are sending to queue, you can simply uh, just say encryption and assign dead letter queue. You even assign the dead letter queue in case if some message uh, failed basically while processing, the message can send to the dead letter queue once you assigned it. But right now I will keep everything default. I will just say create queue. Just a minute. Let me do. Yeah. Okay. Let's create queue. Okay. Here uh, you can see the queue is queue has been created. And like you can see in queue, uh, in flight, we will going to discuss what does all this means. So now I have created the queue. So if you want to see the queue settings, or if you want to change any queue settings, you can do it from here. You can later assign a uh, dead letter queue. You can do the enable encryption. You can just assign the default delivery delay, like, you know, those kind of things. Now I have to create a client app. So I have to create a, a client ID in the client secret. So simply I will say test app. We'll just set, uh, save changes. So once I've done, it will create a client ID and the client secret. We will require this when somebody want to connect uh, to the queue for publishing and subscribing the message. You have to pass the client ID in the client secret. Basically, this is used for authorizing the client, the client who is subscribing or publishing the message to queue. He has to play. Uh, he has to pass the client ID and the client secret. So I will create a simple application. Right. I'll go to message flow. I will create a simple HTTP listener. Right. And I will just uh, do the connector configuration. I will just quickly move. Everybody knows how to do the HTTP connector configuration test. Then I will go to MQ. So if you see in MQ, we have a various method. Uh, consume, NAC, act, publish and subscribe. 
so when you can use akeng neck whenever you have want to send the response manually right in that case you can use akeng neck we will going to discuss the use case for that also now i want to publish the message right so i will simply say publish right so this is the published me method we are using so we are publishing the message to any point mq i will just click on this plus button and here like uh, you have to just give a proper reason right now my service is in default region only my queue is in us east one region so i will keep same if it, it's in us 2 or us 3 you can change it i want client app id and client secret so i will copy it from here okay this is my client secret and i will do the test connection Okay, it is successful. I will say okay. So, if you want to send any uh, user property, we can send it. I will going to show that also. Okay, but uh, let's go with step by step. And here you have to pass a destination name, which is test queue, right? Which we have created in the AnyPoint platform. If you see destination equals to test queue. Simple. That's it. So we just have to do do uh, this much of the configuration. What we require? We require the URL. You just have to change the region basically. Right now. I have created in US East one, so you, it can be US East two. You have to pass a client ID and the client secret. That's it. And here uh, on the connector configuration, you just have to pass the destination. Uh, it's a test queue in my case. I will just uh, stop and run it. Save it. Okay, it is deployed. Everything is good. So now I will use my Postman, and I have an HTTP request, HTTP localhost eighty eighty one slash test. I will just send this particular JSON message. So I got a successful response two hundred. Okay, let me go to test queue. Here you can see one message in the queue, right? You can see that message in queue basically, right? So the when message will go in flight. when the message will pick by queue it is ready to pick and in case if message doesn't get the response it will be visible in in flight basically okay so right now you can see the message in the, the queue i will go and click on this test i will give, go to message browser so message browser where you can see the actual message i will just say get messages so this is my message you can see all the user properties when payload created what is the payload size the maximum payload size supported by any point mq is 10 mb if you are sending a size beyond the 10 mb it will not going to accept okay so maximum size supported uh, payload size supported is 10 mb right so now what we have seen we are able to publish the message to any point mq correct so now next thing i want to read the message for reading the message i will use the subscriber okay so in subscriber uh, i will use the same connector configuration because the authentication uh, authorization client id and the client secret will remain same i will pass the same queue name from where i have to subscribe the message now we need to learn something like we have a three kind of acknowledgement mode auto immediate manual in auto what will happen so if the processing is a successful right it will automatically send acknowledgement successful acknowledgement so your message will be removed from in flight messages so it will be deleted from in flight messages basically in case of immediate right let consider in auto if we are sending neck like no neck negative acknowledgement the message will still remain in flight basically it will be not deleted from in flight immediate in immediate what will happen as soon as the message is picked up right it will send the response and message will be deleted from in flight it doesn't matter whether the message is processed successfully or not in case of manual in case of manual we can 
send your own acknowledgement and own uh, negative acknowledgement you have to use ACK and NACK operations we are going to see that also okay so now and apart from that here you have a two subscriber type prefetch and the po polling in what happened in the prefetch so in prefetch like it will read all the messages into the local memory it will keep the message in the local memory memory it can keep up to maximum 30 messages if you want to keep 300 you can change it to 300 right in prefetch basically so in prefetch it can read up to maximum it will it will read all the messages 30 messages from the queue it will keep in the uh, local memory and it will process basically in case of polling so generally you can say like uh how many messages uh you have to you have to fetch in one batch basically you can say 10 and it will pull every one second basically right so right now i will keep just prefetch and yeah so i will keep all default settings and i will simply use the logger Okay, and I will just type payload. Any question? No, not yet. Okay. Yeah, it will come. So just we start with basic thing. So it, it has read the messages, right? And let's see what happened in the queue. It should doesn't have any messages basically. Yeah, it's showing in Q1. Let me send few more. Send. Let me check. It has read. So it's zero, right? So everything has been picked up and like there's a no error. Let me introduce some kind of error basically. I will use HTTP request. And I will use some dummy URL which is doesn't which doesn't exist. This particular URL doesn't exist. Okay. So what I'm there, I have done, like you know. I'm trying to add the uh, URL. So basically, I will subscribe the message and I will send on this particular URL. But this particular URL doesn't exist. So we will get a connectivity error. In such cases, the message should not be deleted from the queue. It should be visible in, in flight. Okay. So let me do one thing. Let me check my queue. If there's any messages, it's zero. Let me post. So me the message has been read. And we got error, I think. Yes, we got some kind of error here. So let me see what is the situation here. You can see the message is still in in-flight, right? And how how long it will be stay uh, in in-flight? Because we have defined a TTL of seven days, right? It will be in-flight seven days. In case, if it, if it is not processed successfully, like in case, like if your URL comes up and it will try to pick the message and it will try to process it, right? In such cases, it will get deleted. Now, what I will do, uh, I will just stop. I will not stop. So, why this happened? Because we have set up the acknowledge move, ac acknowledge move, acknowledgement mode equals to auto. I will change it to immediate. Let's see what happens here. There's a question. Can we restrict the access to some queues with these clients in secret, like how we do with connected apps? Yes, you have to do with the connected app basically, but uh, what I'm thinking like, you know, you, I don't think like you, you can assign this client ID and client secret to, you know, uh, the particular queue. It is not like that, right? It is, you are allocating the client ID and sec uh, client secret to uh, like all the queues. So basically, like you cannot have a separate, like you can create N number of client ID and the client secret, but you cannot say the client ID and the client secret one is for Q1. The client ID and the client secret uh, uh, two is for Q2. So such kind of mapping is not available right now. Okay. Thank you. So here I started the application and let me purge the queue first. Let I want to be make sure there's a no messages. 
Okay. So now still I have an error, right? I haven't removed this error component, but only I changed the acknowledge mode, uh, acknowledgement mode to immediate. I will just say send. The message has been sent. It has been read, right? And it, it thrown the error also. Let's see what happened in the queue. See, you can see the message has been deleted, right? Even there is an error. So that's the difference between immediate and the auto. In auto, in case if there is a error while processing the message from the queue, it will the message will be visible in the in flight, right? In case of immediate, it doesn't matter. Like you know, it will it will immediately send the response back to the queue. I have I have like you know I have read the message, I have, like you know I am doing the processing. It doesn't matter what is the result of your processing basically, right? So that is the difference between immediate and the auto. Now we will see the third one, which is manual, right? Manual. When you use the manual, right? You have to uh, use the ACK and NAC. So for that, what I will do, I will introduce on error propagate. With on error propagate, if there is any error, I will send a neck. Okay. So in neck, you have to pass a act token attribute. So act, so whenever we read the message, it it publishes one property called act token basically. So basically, like uh, each whenever the message read by MuleSoft or any any tool like any Point Studio. The we get one act token. So whenever we want to send a response back, right? The the message can be related using that particular act token. So I will say act token. Okay. So here I am sending the neck in case if there is any error, right? And here I will say any any kind of error. If it's successful, then I will send the act. right again i will pass act token so act token is just uh, like it can match the uh, actual message basically in the any point mq so okay so act token so if you see on this connector right uh, subscribe click uh, click on this connector in the output you will see those things basically so attribute any point MQ. So you can see act token here. So these are the properties, you know, uh, exposed by uh, this subscriber basically destination, header, properties, message ID, delivery count, content type, and act token. These are the some user prop. I will say like any point MQ properties. I save it. Let me go back to console. Okay, let me send the message again. Okay, I have sent it. Let me check the any point studio. I got the error here, right? I got the error here. So it is keep on reading the message basically, which is right. So let me, so we can see one message in flight, right? Because there is an error. So still it's in flight because we are sending the neck basically. If I change it to auto also, right? Yeah. So now I will remove this request component. I don't need it. Okay, I will just post the message, send. This has been sent. It should, I will send two, three messages. Let's see. So the, it start reading the messages and I don't think there should be uh, messages in flight. There's only one, like it will be also read it. I have sent five, six messages. So I have sent the egg also. Any question on this operation? So what we have seen? Uh, act. So what is a consume? Like if you want to read the message in between the flow, right? So basically, 
so if you like uh, want to read the message in between the floor then like you can use the consume but subscriber is kind of listener uh, so it is always listen to message publisher generally publish the message neck if you want to send the ne negative acknowledgement ek if you want to send uh, like positive acknowledgement consume basically it is used to consume the message in the middle of the flow then you can use the consume basically right so these are the few operations provided by any point mq so let me go to one more use cases um exchange basically right so i will create the exchange so what does exchange do so generally when you create a exchange right you can bind a multiple queues to that particular exchange so whenever you publish the message to exchange so whatever queue bind to that particular exchange the message will multicast to all the queues basically for example i have sent message one message to any, any to the exchange right and exchange have a uh, three queue binded so the message will go to all these three queues so this pattern is generally known as a multicasting basically so let me create it quickly so i will say exchange and let me create few queues basically first test queue i will just say uh, test queue one create queue then i will also say one more uh, queue i will say test queue two get queue then i will create a exchange so i will say test change it's just say all save changes so now what i have done i have binded a three queue to this particular exchange so right now let's see if there's any message in all so we don't have any messages any queue so i have binded this three queue to this particular exchange now what i have to do right uh, i will simply say in the publish instead of destination uh, right you have to give a exchange name test exchange no changes that's it okay it's test exchange okay i will just save it so generally like uh, if you see e in e-commerce or in uh, any other thing like you know so you may have to publish the same message to the multiple places right so you can make use of this particular functionality like uh, you may have to say, uh, send the uh, order to warehouse you may have to send the order for the payment you may have to send or, or like you know order to in to, for inventory check you know those kind of things you have to perform right so those things you can perform asynchronously in the parallel basically right so this is uh, this is where this functionality is very important in future if you want to add more uh, a more kind of functionality like we like for example like uh, what i shipping right so if you want uh, shipping also want that order data so you simply create one queue for the uh, shipping in that particular exchange you don't have to do any code changes right and the shipping team or shipping application will automatically read the messages from that particular queue right this is save let me publish the message everything is good yeah good so let me go and check each and every queue so here you can see one message in queue here you can see one message in queue here uh, it will come okay i i think okay it will not come because like uh i have already read it from here right so you can see you, you will see you will able to see in the log so that's why it is deleted from there right yeah so you can see that the message has been multicasted uh, cast to all the three queues basically correct so this is where the exchange is useful basically so you can group the message you know within the one exchange then you send the message to exchange and exchange will multicast the message to all the queues which is binded to the exchange right any question on this particular pattern um there's one question uh what can be the tps if we specify max local messages as, at 300 which one uh see it's so generally so I, i'm not aware of tps but you can uh once you may like you know if you mention mention maximum dot local dot message at 300 right so i will tell you let me go to the connector then i will can exchange here so here like let's consider uh here you mention like subscriber type equals to prefetch right and like if you see uh, if you define the maximum si uh, local message equal to 300 right so it will try to keep uh, like 
300 messages in memory within like within your local basically right so you will see those messages in flight in the any point mq but it will try to fetch those messages uh into your local memory and it can keep maximum up to 300 messages basically see definitely like it will definitely increase the transaction process per second transactions per second it will increase definitely because it, it has to read from the local only right it doesn't have to read it doesn't have to read from the any point mq basically that like it will fetch all the messages at a one time into your local and it will start processing yeah I, but if you say tps i'm not aware of like how many messages it can process per second basically i don't have that uh, that particular reading right now okay and another one what is the advantage of using any point mq over other brokers like solas see uh i will tell you so see so i like i'm not aware of solas but i can give some advantage of any point mq basically so one of the thing like uh it is a part of any point platform basically right it is a completely part of any point platform so it also allow you to use various uh various integration pattern like circuit breaker pattern multicasting then uh, reliability pattern durability patterns so those kind of things is already available right and like it has all it it also provide a connector right uh, for any point mq basically uh, through which you can read the message only i see one limitation with any point mq it it just it just allow the maximum size of message which is 10 mb it doesn't allow more than that so 10 mb right so if you if you are try, if you want to process any image of 100 mb or any message of 100 mb it is not possible like in the in such cases you may have to divide the messages into batches and you have to send to the any point mq apart from that like you know uh if you see the any point mq we don't have to worry about the scalability disaster recovery those kind of thing right and apart from that it is it is spin up across the multiple availability zones basically right so if if in case any availability zone goes down it will be the the it will be automatically taken care by the uh, another availability zone you don't have to do any switch over or anything it will automatically done for you right so those kind of thing all right yeah. and then if the same message gets published to multiple queues using exchange queue and one of the queue processing fails then what happens to the next multicast message no see for exchange it doesn't matter like you know so so let's consider i publish my message to three queue basically right and one of the queue uh, failed to process the message basically right it doesn't matter for exchange exchange will keep multicasting the message to all the queue as soon as exchange receive the message it will multicasting it basically then all in right. that case you know i will tell you like abhishek what you can do uh, i will tell you so i i am coming on that particular scenario so okay so i am coming on that what i will do i know i will just change the acknowledge mode to immediate and i will just remove act and i will just again go to http request i will just remove this error handling okay and let me go to any uh, any point thank you so what i will do i will remove all this queue i don't want otherwise i will confuse okay so i have only one queue now i will come to you like abhishek i am just showing your use case what you can do http local host pp89 i am just putting the error url so this url will never is a uh, response basically i will save it so what i will do let like in case if some message failed right i i want to send uh, that message to some other queue basically right or uh, maybe for like uh, later processing or something like that so what i will do i will go to this queue settings or better what i will do i will create one queue i will say dlq okay dead letter q and i will just say create queue i will go to test queue i will go to settings and here i will say assign queue and i will assign dead letter q so basically like when the message should come to the dead letter q i will say at least after two fields basically right so whenever the message will fail for two time it will come to the dead letter q right if the message will be removed from in flight and it will come to dead letter q so i will just save it's done so if you see this particular queue now 
so there is a dead letter q is assigned so we don't have to do any changes of logic here basically right we don't have to do any changes here so let me check what i have done here i will just say auto refresh test queue everything is fine just save it let's check the console okay let me send the message okay okay fine i just have to change the name to test queue because i have deleted the exchange Okay, it is done. I will send few messages. Okay, so here we got the error. So, so what will happen? It will uh, uh, retry for two times uh, from in-flight messages. Once the uh, two retry has been done, the message will go to the DLQ. Let's see if it is done. So we can see few messages. Like I've sent three messages, right? All three messages in dead letter Q. And what happened here? Here we don't have any messages, right? So let me browse it and just check. Okay, so you can see it here. Like these are the messages. Okay, so now by this, like what we have seen, dead letter Q now, right? So now I have one use case is like I want to do the end-to-end -end message tracking or tracing basically. And right now, any point MQ doesn't generate any kind of correlation ID. Then how we can like send the correlation ID basically, like to do the end-to-end -end tracing, right? I have one thing like you know. So now, either you can generate uh, while publishing the message, right? So what I can do, I will use uh, one set variable while publishing the message, right? And I will just say correlation. ID and by default, uh, when the uh, when the request is coming from HTTP listener, it generates the correlation ID. So you will find the correlation ID in this particular field. Okay. So I just assign this correlation ID uh, to this set variable. Now I can go to publish. In publish, I will have some user properties basically, right? So I can click it here, or simply I can go it here, and I can say. Correlation ID as what's dot correlation ID. Just I will remove this uh, pub subscribe message because I don't want this to read. Okay, I will just do it. Just I will save it. So I added the user property. You can add the custom user properties also. So this is just one correlation ID. If you want to add any uh, custom relation ID, you can do. User properties, you can do it. I will just say save all console. Let's wait. Send it. Okay, it is done. Let me go back to my queue message browser and get messages let me send few messages yeah here you can see the messages and here you can see the correlation id has been published right and how you can how how can we read in the flow basically while subscribing right so i will just remove this request I will again use the subscriber. Simply, I will call subscriber. I will just pass a test you. So now you want to read. If you see it here in the output, where you get this value attribute dot properties dot correlation ID. If you say dot correlation ID, right? So what I will do, I will use the log.
I will say attributes dot properties dot correlation ID. The second soul. Okay, this is good. Just send. Oh, I don't. Uh, that's fine. I send it. Like now, it has been read. You can see the correlation ID has been read it here, right? So you can see it here. So that is how, like, you can pass the various user properties uh, for tracing purpose and for the other purposes also. If you want to pass some custom properties, you can do that, right? Now we will see, uh, basically, data, like you know, circuit breaker pattern, basically, right? So for circuit breaker pattern, I will go to subscriber, right? And if you do, uh, let me go to advanced. In, if you go to, like under subscribe, you can go to advanced, under advanced global reference. Before I get into this, let me explain the circuit breaker pattern. So what is a circuit breaker pattern? So generally, if you see any circuit have a three state, it's closed, open or half open. So these are the three states. If everything is working fine, right, there is a no issues. The circuit is always in the closed state. If there is a, any issue, like, you know, the circuit is always in the open state. When circuit try to check whether uh, my, sir, my circuit is working fine or not, right? In such cases, it's a half open, right? In case if it is getting, if, if in case if it identify the circuit is working fine, the half open will uh, change into close. In case if it's identified circuit is still not working, it will again move to the open mode basically. So these are the three states maintained by the circuit breaker pattern. So always start with close. From close, it can go to open. From open, it can go to half open. From half open, it can go to close or it can go to the open. So when from close to open, when the error count is greater than equal to error threshold. So basically, if you have defined the threshold equals to five and whenever your error reach five, right? the circuit will open five or greater than five the circuit will open basically now you have set up some time minutes of two or three minutes like after two three minutes try to check with the service service is up or not right so in that case it will get half open it will try to check with the service is up and running if it is up and running it will be full close right then it will be coming to close state otherwise it will come into the open state okay so here i can go to global reference not global reference Again. yeah so on what error types you want the circuit uh, so let me check i will say http connectivity okay i want the circuit and other error is you can put stock comma separated http timeout so if there's a two error what is the error threshold so error threshold like you know error threshold i will just say two so trip timeout so basically after how many minutes i have to check with the circuit is uh, is a uh, circuit is working or not i will just say one minute or i will say i will just say one minute uh, you know and i will just say minutes okay. let me introduce some kind of error I will not say 881. Yeah, here is the circuit breaker. let me clear everything let me go back to my let me go to q what i will do i will just go to i will just remove this uh, mapping basically okay, just save changes i will purge I will just remove this data related to you also. Okay. So now let me send the messages. I will send one. 
I'll send two. I'll send three. So in flight, uh, you can see like it, it will pick the messages for two times only. Like you know. So let me restart the flow basically. Let me purge it again. Okay, that's fine. So let's wait. Okay, so I purge it. Let me start the application. Okay, so let me clear the locks and let me post three messages. One, two, three. See what will happen like, you know, so uh, it will read only the messages for the two, like it got the two messages and once it get a two, like two errors, right? It will stop reading the messages, right? So now it is not reading any messages. Let me send a few more. it is not reading it right so let me clear the console so i have given the uh, eviction time of one minute basically right so after one minute it will try to read it because with circuit breaker like it when it see the backend system is not working right it will stop picking the messages it will open the circuit right and it will stop picking the messages basically after a few minutes, it will again check whether the backend service is up or not. If it is up, then it will close the circuit. It will, if it is not up, it will, it will keep the circuit open again, basically. Right. So that is a where like a circuit breaker pattern is very useful. And generally like in microservice, that now it start pick, it picked the one message after one minute. Right. So now again, what happened? It came to like from close, it gone to open from open. It came to half open. Now again, from half open, it check whether the service is up and running. It is not. Then again, it came back to the open basically, right? If it sees the service is up and running, it will just uh, like, you know, reset the trace error threshold and it will come to the closed state. Any question on this? There are a bunch of questions, but I don't know if they're related. <laughs> Do you want to see them all? Okay. First, during migration to prod, how can we create these queues and exchanges by using scripts or CICD? Yeah, like see, you, I will, I will come on that. So let me, I, I will show you right now. Any point? You have a, 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 any point MQ admin API, right? You can create, uh, like you can make use of those. You can make use of any point CLI also. You have any point MQ admin API where you can get access queue, like you can create the FIPO queue. You can create uh, various, you know, uh, chain messaging routing rule. You can even create the queues. You can create the, you know, uh, exchanges. Everything you can do it. So, like, you can use this. Uh, you can integrate these APIs, or you can integrate this AnyPoint CLI script, you know, for automatically creating the queues, exchange, or whatever. I will come on that part. I have a small demo for that. Also, don't worry. Yeah. All right. Um, and I think you already did this. Any DLQ option? Uh, I think I already showcased it, right? Uh, dead yeah. letter Q options. So All I've right. seen it. Like you can simply bind your, you know, uh, any point MQ with the dead letter Q in case of any error, like after certain threshold, it will move to the dead letter Q. So you have that option. Let me show you like once again, I will not show complete demo, but if you click on this Q and you can go to this uh, settings, you can just assign the dead letter Q if you have any Q. 
or you have to create one dead letter queue in the same way we are creating the normal queue and just and it will like visible in this particular list and you can allocate it and you can just tell uh, like after how many uh, retry the message should come to the dead letter queue that's it simple cool. you don't have to do anything yeah is the point is there i don't think I, no transaction is not supported by any point time queue right if you want to support the transaction right uh, in in that case you may have to use some saga orchestration or choreographic pattern but as i mentioned like you know then you have to use the three different queue you don't have to use the exchange here basically three different queues then just implement a saga pattern and with saga you can have some transaction manager who will take care of the all this because any point time queue doesn't support out of box transactions basically you have to imp- implement the compensation logic basically all right can we not use IBM MQ or WMQ in mu4 yes, is not can. yeah yeah you can use it right you have a connector for this right you have a jms connector you have amqp connector right so you have a lot of connect you have mqtt connector you have a solas connector so you can connect to other queues also so we have a connector for this right we have a ibm mq connector also right so you can connect uh, to those queues basic see this is any point mq is a out of box capability provided by mulesoft it is like a fully integrated with your any point platform basically and last one okay how half open period is determined yeah definitely like uh, if you see uh, let me show you you have eviction time right so basically you go to subscriber and if you go to advance i have given the trip time out right uh, like you know one minute basically so generally what happen whenever it come to open after one minute it will try to half open basically right so here you can define this particular parameter so it trip time out support days hour microsecond millisecond minutes nanosecond and seconds right so this is where you can define the trip time out yeah perfect that's all okay so now like you have something called fipo queue also so like you can create a fipo queue also let me show you it's like nothing changed no no different connector so you can simply just say fipo queue so i will just say test fipo right and just create queue so this is the fipo see in fipo i think uh, in flight message cannot be more than 1000 i think and whereas in queue you can have a in flight message up to 100000 basically so that's a difference and fipo is uh, slower as compared to a normal queue that is understood right because it will wait like it will send one message it will once it will get the response for that particular message then it will allow the second messages right but from connector configuration perspective from implementing this uh, circuit breaker pattern dead letter queue whatever like uh, acknowledge mode acknowledgement mode everything remains same right only the difference the fipo queue will process message in the sequential order whereas the normal queue doesn't matter it will not process the message in the sequential order and it will also not uh, uh, wait for the response for the pre- previous messages it will keep on sending basically yeah okay so that these are a few things now i will come to some kind of rest apis so i will go with this mq broker api so where like uh, you have this particular four apis i have i mentioned it here right so before that what i will do i will just remove this subscriber the same okay so first thing what you have to do uh, you have this particular you are let me open the exchange like you know any point mq api yeah this is the exchange portal okay you have your bunch of apis so like this is the mq broker api from see if let consider if you have a non mule soft application right so non mule soft application doesn't provide the connector to integrate with any point mq right so you can make use of this mq broker api to integrate it with your any point mq for publishing and the subscribing the message right so here i have some bunch of operations for example like uh, here you can see you can send the messages to queue you can retrieve the message you can delete the messages right then also like the first thing what happen so you you need to have a client id in the client secret and the grant type here you have to first generate a token 
for generating the token, I will go to the AnyPoint platform. I will go to client apps. I'll copy the client ID. I will copy this. I will just change this to client right client ID. And then I will go back and I will just copy this client secret. Just send the request. So I will get a token, right? Okay, I got the token. Let me go to destination. I have some messages. I have to purge it. Okay. So what I have done, I have generated the access token. I will copy this. Now I will send the messages. For sending the messages, uh, what you have to do, you can go to this uh, method and you can just say put. Right. This is the URL MQ hyphen region. You have to provide the region ID. This is URL. You have to pass organization ID and the environment ID. So from where you can get that simply I, I, I have a small trick. You can do you can go to API manager. You can get it from access management also, but better you can go to one place and you can find everything. So here information. So this is your environment ID. And this is your uh, organization ID. Okay. So you can copy it from here. I have already done it. So you have to pass organization ID. You have to pass environment ID. Then in destination, you have to pass a queue name. In my case, it's a test queue. And just you have to pass the message ID. That's it. Okay. So what I'm doing, uh, uh, if you see it here, here it is. So you have to pass a destination ID, environment ID. And organization ID. Organization ID, I have just shown you from where you can extract, from where you can extract environment ID, from where you can extract destination ID. So I'm passing this simple message, right? Before that, I have to just copy this uh, access token. I will go to send messages, header. We just change the authorization bearer token. I'll send the request. Yeah, you can see the message has been created successfully. I will send few more messages. 561, send. This ID can be anything. I have to pass 10, 12 messages. So let me check. There are few messages here. I have passed more. Could have more messages if we come. Yeah, here. time best size like in one batch how many messages i can uh, pick up then lock ttl so generally like i have picked one, one messages i can put the locker on that particular message so it cannot be picked by other uh, other consumer for that particular time in this case i will say 120 for two minutes i don't have have this message to be picked by anybody i will just say best size it will pick it will create the array which contain the 10 payloads basically okay so just I want to do one change. Uh, where is my postman? I have to copy this uh, token. Okay. Let me check. Just send it. So here you can see uh, you get the message start from 563, 570, 73, 74. Like, you know, you can change the best. You can just say send. Right, so, so we can get the array of messages. It depends, like you know, if the message is available, how many messages are available in in flight, those kind of things. So now, like what happened now, you have read the messages, right? And how we can send the acknowledgement, we have to delete the messages. So I will copy this lock ID. 
So I have to delete this 560 messages. I will go to delete messages. Right? And I just pass the log ID. And I think in URL, I will just pass five. It's 560 only, right? It's 560. And authorization header. Yeah, the message has been successfully uh, deleted. So like that, you have to delete everything from here, basically. So once you read the messages, it's your responsibility to you know delete the messages, basically. Right? Yeah. I think uh, the, like I, we are running out of time. So I think uh, I'm done with. Uh, I, actually, I try to cover a lot, lot of things for this particular AnyPoint MQ. So like if you need any kind of support, any kind of help, you can always reach me via LinkedIn. Yeah, I hope you like the session. I try to cover most of the thing. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think a lot of people were really like uh, benefited from this really quickly, though. Are there any limitations on number of consumers from NQ? I don't think so. Like there is, there is some limitation, like I think around uh, not in the consumer, basically, but uh, there are 450 or 460 queues can be buy into one exchange. That is one limitation, 450 or 460. I don't know the exact number. It's between 450 to 500, right? So you can bind that many of the uh, queues to the a single any point exchange, basically. It's not any point exchange, any point MQ exchange, basically. But uh, I don't think there's any limitation on the number of consumers. And finally, this question from meal three. Okay, there is a no. I, I let me check if there is any alternative to WMQ connector. Uh, I will check if see. W, so my question is, WMQ is using GMS. What uh, protocol WMQ is using? Do you are aware? If it is uh, if it is using GMS, then you can make use of GMS connector. If this is using MQTT protocol, then you can make use of MQTT connector. And if, if, if it is using EMQP protocol, then you can make use of EMQP connector. So there might be some kind of protocol used by this uh, WMQ. So we have a connector for everything like, you know, so you can check that. So what is the protocol used by uh, WMQ connector? If it is GMS, then you can use the GMS connector like, you know. All right. Cool. And Audrey says that was great. <laughs> Thank you, Audrey. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, that was super helpful, Jackie. Thank you so much. Thank you always you. do amazing sessions. Oh, yeah, we I have think. the answer. Yeah, but it's request response process. Yeah, in GMS, it support request response. Okay. If you see in GMS, let me show you quickly. If I have a GMS connector, I don't know like, what protocol GMS use. But if you see, there are a lot of connectors which support request response. See, GMS publish consume, right? So it will publish the message and it will just say, uh, wait for the response. So those kind of connectors or those kind of capability are available. You know, you just have to check what kind of protocol it is using in the background WMQ. Because I don't know about the WMQ much, but you, if you need to check like what protocol is using by the WMQ, like, okay. Sweet. All right. Thank you so much, Itendra or Jackie. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Thank and you. thank you so much. Yeah, for everyone watching, remember to follow us on twitch.tv slash mulesoft underscore community. There we have all of our previous recordings and you can see the schedule to see when we are coming live next. Um, and you will also get notifications as soon as we're live so you never miss us. And that's it. Thank you so much, Jackie. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Thanks, Alex. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye-bye.